Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to our first Flames of War battle report. Uh, today we decided to play Bailey against myself, uh, American paratroopers versus a German sort of half infantry, half armored squadron. Uh, my set is actually from the Flames of War starter set, and Bailey decided to play the Parachute Rifle Company, uh, of course taking some units from that to match my number of points. I think he had like 785 uh, compared to my 790, so it worked out pretty well. As you can see, uh, just a little bit of terrain here. We decided to roll off uh, to see who got what side, and Bailey won, so he decided to take the far side, uh, even though he was thinking about the side with the chapel. But I think the far side probably ended up helping him actually more, so I think that was a good choice. As you can see, there are some of his units. Uh, everything is based on his. Unfortunately, I did not get all of my units based, so as you'll see later, uh, I did put some markers on blank bases and such to um, point out which units would be which. So you can see just a little overview of the battlefield. Uh, we had four farmhouses, uh, four fields, two big trench lines, and a chapel. We went ahead and we're talking about what kind of cover is what. Um, so basically the houses were concealed and bulletproof. The fields were just concealed, no bulletproof. The trenches were concealed and bulletproof, and the chapel would not end up really being used in the game. Um, though, of course, it being a building, it would give concealed and such. So he's kind of just talking about his forces a little bit as I was asking a few questions. Uh, on mine, I have two rifle MG platoons with a SMG Panzerfaust command for each. I also have three Stug G assault guns. I have my command section, uh, which was basically Panzer Shreks and such. And I also had my two Pack 40s with their little command team. So overall, uh, basically playing an infantry complete side against sort of half anti tank and such, we rolled off to see who would go first. Bailey won the roll, and so he will take the first turn. So right now, kind of just showing the table how it was set up, uh, we had two pieces, the left flank and the right flank. Bailey put one platoon on each flank, and uh, on my left flank I had a platoon, a Stug platoon, the Pack 40s and on the right I had my HQ and one uh, MG rifle platoon. We also had two objectives, uh, both of us placed one on each side. And I decided to place one behind the chapel and just one on the other side. My general strategy was to try to combine my Stugs and my Pack 40s. Um, and I would try to put some fire on him. But anyway, uh, turn one for the Americans. So Bailey goes ahead and uh, moves his paratroopers up to the trenches. That way they are concealed and um, will get their bulletproof cover. In retrospect, in fact, we, I'm, I'm not sure completely uh, if we done the cover right because I was wanting to think there was some deal where if there's a unit in the platoon that is not concealed, then for some reason the rest aren't. But you can leave a comment in the bottom and uh, let us know about that. So anyway, he's moving up on both sides, uh, moves a few squads there up to the house, trying to move them in, and he will try to move the rest to maneuver them a little bit and try to move towards the field. Um, at this time, again, my general strategy was to keep my Stugs and my Pack 40s uh, on this side, actually, with one platoon. I was wanting to try to get off as many shots as I could to pin him down. I had actually sort of done a uh, pregame sort of a look at all the units, and I figured that would be my best bet. Because, of course, the Pack 40s and the Stoke Gs are good tank killers, uh, not necessarily great infantry killers. So Bailey moves his guys up uh, towards the field. He also, he does have at least, I think he has one mortar team in each platoon and some bazookas. So he goes ahead and does a skill check to see if he can make it in the house. Uh, he fails the first house, re-rolls for the second, and he also fails that one. So now it is my first turn. 
So uh, I'll go ahead and apologize here for some of the camera work. Uh, I was trying to do most of it myself here, so I'll kind of try to describe what I was doing. So since my Stuggies and my pack 40s have a 32 inch range, uh, I tried to move each as little as possible, but I also found there were a couple inches um, out of range. So I went ahead and moved some of those up, and I would move my pack 40s up as well, and my platoon. And you can see Bailey doing a little camera work here from the side. So I do that, and uh, we messed with the camera for a second, picking it up. And I will end up moving my headquarters and uh, my other platoon up as well. Uh, and then I decided to go ahead and move my pack 40s up a couple more inches because I was just uh, out of range for those. And of course I want those to be firing the whole game because a wasted turn with those is, well, just a wasted turn. So I go ahead and I move my platoon up, just trying to uh, get within range so I can try to fire at him later, and my HQ up as well, uh, and I'll end up combining those two later on. So I move them just right outside of the chapel. Uh, they're outside of firing distance anyway, so it didn't make too much of a difference. So I went ahead, uh, and once again, the good thing about this game is you can measure it any time, so I'm measuring distance trying to see what can fire and now that I'm now that I'm within distance I go ahead and take some shots but since they were more than 16 inches out and they were veterans uh, I would be hitting on a six which as you can guess would end up not really giving me anything there but you know pot shots are pot shots and I'll take what I can get so I went ahead and I would try for it and, uh, oh, I, I go ahead and uh, now I'm rolling for the Blitzkrieg Stormtrooper move. Uh, more so for my tanks, really, and uh, my infantry on my right flank than anything else. So I go ahead and roll those. And I move my infantry on the right flank up another good four inches towards the farmhouse and the field. And with all of that done, uh, I give the thumbs up, done with my turn, and now it's Bailey's second turn. So he failed his checks, but since he was up against the building, he can go ahead and move a squad in for free, so he decides to do that. And uh, in retrospect, and something Bailey would talk about later, he decided to run his soldiers up into the field. Uh, and we did talk about the fact that running them would actually give me, uh, we either said it was full rate of fire or I think the rule book says double rate of fire. Uh, we did check that and I just can't remember for sure, but he ends up running some of those guys there. So if you want to leave something in the comments in the bottom, uh, let us know if we did the rule right. And so, let's see, it's my second turn, I believe, and I go ahead and I try to move some guys up and into the farmhouse as well as towards the field. Uh, I do a skill check for one of those and I end up making that. So right now, um, and especially with so many infantry in this game, we are trying to be a little more careful with our fields of fire, uh, making sure we have that one inch space, um, making sure everyone stays in command as well, even though you have six inches. Uh, that farmhouse especially, uh, you just kind of have to watch how you place your guys. So I'm trying to place everyone so that they can shoot uh, when I assumed Bailey would probably try to move forward. So I check my spacing there. Uh, as you can see, the guys with the uh, three shiny coins, those are my HQs, uh, which are basically just SMG Panzerfaust teams. Uh, the second in command, and just a general command team, which I end up attaching to that platoon. So I go ahead, uh, I point at my Stugs and my Pack 40s to fire on those guys. 
Um, and once again, if you want to leave something in the comments about this, let us know if we did this right. Uh, we had tried looking it up in the rule book, and I just can't remember whether it was that you get full rate of fire or double rate of fire. So I'm measuring that out, um, trying to see how many shots I can get. And I ended up rolling double rate of fire. So I might have done that wrong. But I go ahead and use the machine guns on the Stugs. And um, just shoot the pack 40s without them moving. So I go ahead and roll, looking for fives. So I get one hit. Uh, and I think I get one or two more hits. Yeah, another hit there. And so I roll for the other pack 40. And let's see, I think I got two more hits there. So then I go on to my Stugs uh, to fire the machine guns, which he would um, later point out. He goes ahead and changes that to a three, so I have enough dice to do this. So I actually got six for each Stug, and once again, I guess I'm noting this for probably the third time, uh, I think we did do that rule wrong, and we'll definitely be sure to uh, check in the future. But as you will see, it actually didn't end up producing that much, uh, which really surprised me, you know, out of uh, 18 shots, I think I only actually hit three with the machine guns. Uh, so, and that was surprising, but once again, you know, you're hitting on fives, um, you know, that's how it goes. So we rolled for the first and the second, and we roll for the third. And we get a total of three hits. And uh, as Bailey would later point out, that's a good thing in this game about infantry is uh, they're very useful, even your basic infantry. So we go ahead and uh, we talk about the shots a little bit, and he will end up taking a saves for that, and I don't think he really lost any. I think he might have lost one, maybe. So anyway, uh, Bailey's third turn now. He makes a roll there. Okay. Um, and I roll for my Blitzkrieg move. Ah, so this was this was actually um, the end of the turn here. I was rolling for Blitzkrieg, and he had been rolling for his saves. So my bad on that one. So I go ahead, and uh, I was hoping I would get it. I move my guys up on the right four inches and into the field. So this is actually uh, the start of Bailey's. Let's see, his third or fourth turn. So he go, goes ahead and uh, rolls to see if he can get rid of the um, uh, the pin down. And I think he gets rid of it. Yeah, he gets rid of that. So he's trying to contemplate a little bit what to do here. Going around the table a little bit. And he rolls to uh, dig in for both groups. Um, and then he, I think we realized, well, there's not really any use digging in. He did get it on the left flank. And I made a save there, and I got it. So now it's my third turn. And I go ahead and move my guys up into the field. So you can see them there. And then I go back to my left flank. Uh, I believe I kept the pack 40s where they were. And I just try to get everyone lined up for machine gun shooting once again. Uh, unfortunately, being dug in, it doesn't really help much. But I decide, since they are dug in, that I'm going to have to assault sooner or later. So I start moving my guys up uh, out of cover and into a barren field. Uh, in retrospect, maybe we probably should have had more cover. I don't think we quite had 25% on the table. But... Uh, I think it ended up, you know, making the game interesting.
So I go ahead and uh, move those guys up. And once again, I'll apologize. I was trying to do the best job I could with the video here. So I move those guys up and over the bunker, making sure to keep my command team at the back because uh, even though Germans can substitute your command team for someone else, uh, which in retrospect I guess I should have done, uh, I would rather play it safe. And of course I keep my spacing, trying to keep some firing, firing lanes excuse me, open. And doing some measuring on the right there. You can sort of see the table a little bit. Um, my guys were spaced kind of funky. I think I took two shots, two pot shots at him, uh, and he would take his save, I believe. Here in just a moment. There you go. Takes a save. Uh, I think he felt the three plus, and then he takes the firepower, which I'd have to get a six, and obviously that doesn't do anything. So we go ahead and fire my first pack 40. Uh, gets a hit, so fire the second, and I believe, let's see, I don't get any hits on that one. So I go ahead and go to my Stub G's, uh, using the machine guns, of course, and I fire those three. So I get one hit on that, fire my next machine gun, get another hit on that, and my last machine gun. And I think we got one hit. Yep. So each of the machine guns got one hit. And I go over to my platoon and see if I can make any pot shots. Uh, and we try to measure out and see how many we're going to let fire. And I think we determined that those six were a okay to go. <laughs> camera work <laughs> so we uh, go ahead and do one for each we're looking for fives once again uh, miss on that one I know I miss on that one and the third one and the fourth one the fifth time I finally get a hit and on the last guy I miss once again so six shots only made one and uh, this is a good testament to the game as well why things like assaults end up having to happen too. You can't just shoot all day. So we go ahead and uh, we try to separate our shots into firepower and uh, all that good stuff. So we go ahead and roll our dice there. And that shot as well goes ahead and rolls for that and I think he's okay on those. So nothing really happens there. So basically just kind of trading fire while we're trying to uh, move up a little bit. Go ahead and roll for Blitzkrieg again at the end of the turn. Um, I believe both of those groups get theirs. Uh, pack 40 gets it. And I think that group may have ended up getting it as well. I believe this was the turn because uh, I actually ended up doing really good on that. So the Blitzkrieg definitely helps. Uh, I do like playing the armies that are more around movement because maneuverability is definitely important. So I go ahead and move all my guys up an extra four inches uh, and pretty much try to get ready to assault within the next turn or two. Fiddle around with the camera a little more. And uh, yeah. There you go. So now, uh, Bailey looks at his guys a little bit. I think I was probably joking with him a little bit or something there, just trying to get a uh, good look at him. Uh, it was an interesting game. You know, we're both trying to uh, figure out what to do there. So Americans turn four. Bailey decides to go ahead and stay dug in and keep taking shots. Of course, I had my guys out in the open, which I don't really think I put a whole lot of thought into, and so Bailey gets to roll somewhere around 10 shots. Uh, and only two of them made it from that first group. I believe he fires his mortar as well. Uh, so three hits over there. I believe that was his mortar, actually. 
So overall, uh, once again, a lot of shots, but not a lot of shots actually made it. So I go ahead and roll my saves, and I make three saves. So that was a good deal. Uh, transferring to the right flank, same thing, keeps his guys there, uh, so he gets his full rate of fire. Uh, and once again, we might have messed up on who gets cover saves, and or not cover saves, but concealed. So he rolls more shots uh, and makes a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them on that side. I'm uh, pretty sure I cursed a little bit after those two rolls. He made a lot of shots. So he does that and uh, his mortar and such. So I go ahead and uh, my guys are... My guys are pinned down after that one, actually. Uh, I end up getting enough shots, and I will roll for my save. And once again, I'm pretty sure I cursed after that, uh, because I think I made one save out of five or six. So we go ahead and uh, we're, we replace some of my modelless units. I believe I lost four or five guys there. Uh, and so I was a little bit worried about having to make a platoon morale check, which, for the record, I'll go ahead and say... Uh, the, the we went ahead and counted our command units uh, like our platoon command and such as part of the platoon when talking about morale. So turn four for the Germans. Man, not much on the right flank there going on. Uh, on the left flank, I am getting ready to move up into an assault. Uh, it was kind kind of risky, uh, but. I was really hoping that the machine machine yeah, machine guns would end up putting up enough shots uh, with the pack 40s and with my platoon to pin them down so I could try to do an assault. Uh, because if I didn't, the game was just going to go nowhere. So we go ahead and do that, get some nice shots there. Uh, decide to go ahead and roll for the platoon first, looking for fives, I believe. I made some, I think I made some shots there, one or two. Uh, and then next we go ahead and do the machine guns on the first Stug G. I make one, uh, roll for the second. I make two, and grab a couple more dice so I can roll for my third machine gun. There we go. And let's see if I can get enough shots to pin them down. And I end up being able to do it. And uh, that's definitely a relief. Because if I did not pin them down and went into assault, uh, that probably would have been game. So I get another shot on the pack 40, and I am very happy. Uh, six shots out of the five needed to pin down hit. So that's good. So I was very pleased um, with that. Fiddling with the camera a little bit more, uh, we go ahead and they get pinned down. Uh, I believe that I move my guys up and Bailey gets his return fire. Um, and I get the saves on those eventually here somewhere. <laughs> a little shoddy camera work. But I end up, yeah, I was measuring a little bit, uh, getting ready to move my guys up into the assault position. I'm, I might have lost one, one group there. But I go ahead and move my guys up, as you can see. Uh, and we start the assault. So basically, we start trading some hits back and forth. Uh, and of course, you don't get cover saves. I think this might have been when we exchanged fire. Kind of hard to tell there. Uh, or that was that was his assault. Uh, and thankfully, I think I only lost that one group. So I was happy with that. We're kind of fiddling around a little bit, talking about the rules. Uh, and trying to figure everything out. So I go ahead and I believe I take my hits here, or my rolls to hit. And I get three. 
which is perfect. Uh, and we determined that for assaults, we would pretty much just take off the guys that were closest. And that's kind of what we were discussing here for a moment was how to allocate those. So we put them off to the side uh, so we could check our morale later in case I got down to that. And uh, Bailey decide, goes ahead and he rolls to see if he's going to counterattack and he makes it. So he's going to uh, try to decide here how he wants to go about doing his counterattack. Of course, at this time, uh, I guess I should note that my Stugs were non-assaulting, and uh, he had some other. He had, I think, one non-assaulting team there. But he goes ahead and he moves his guys forward. Um, so I wasn't there to win quite yet, and we kind of clarify a couple things here. Measure some distances out, and we set just move them up to the fence, and that will be in base contact. So he goes ahead and he rolls uh, to see who hits. I think he only, yeah, he only made one hit there. So that was good for me because a uh, one roll would have ruined the whole assault. So I lose one guy. And um, we end up moving my guys back again. Uh, I believe I ended up counterattacking and taking out more of his guys as well. Uh, and that was his role for morale. He felled it, so he moved back, and I would go ahead and move forward a little bit. And now both of our platoons will end up being pinned down. So I did end up winning that assault, uh, which was very important, uh, as you'll see later in the game. So that was essential for me winning. Uh, well, I mean winning the assault, not, not you know, the game. But for me, trying to win. So anyway, uh, with the assault done, since my stugs were non-assaulting, I go ahead and I roll for their Blitzkrieg move. I roll for the Pack 40 Blitzkrieg move and uh, my platoon over there, which doesn't make it. I believe they made it. I think I moved them up a couple. Yeah, I moved them to the side a couple inches to try to give them a clear field of fire. Trying to determine how to best do that here. Uh, because obviously, you know, if you look at the board a little bit, his left objective, there is obviously a lot less guys over there. I was playing a strong side, so um, I was hoping that I might be able to try to run up to the objective at best. So now it's Bailey's turn. Uh, after a bloody assault, he goes ahead and rolls for his morale check to see if he can get unpinned, and he makes it. Uh, and he decides to go ahead and keep shooting with his guys. Uh, and again, we're trying to can see what all we need. And we roll. And some hits. I believe. Or no, maybe those were misses. A couple more hits. And I will take my saves. And I lose my dice a couple times. Uh, and I wish I would have kept those because those were good rolls. And I made a couple, I think, there. So I believe I lose one or two. And moving back over to the left. Uh, Bailey goes ahead and, oh, I think he was trying to uh, shoot me there. So that was the end of his turn, not a whole lot going on, and now uh, turn five for the Germans. So we're trying to continue to push forward on the left flank, kind of just looking the battlefield over a little bit. Uh, I rolled to see if I can unpin, and I fell out miserably with a one. So I go ahead and decide to let my stugs move up and so I move them to the left. Uh, obviously at this point in time being on turn five, turn five? Turn five, yeah. Uh, I don't want anything to get bogged down or anything like that uh, because I need everything I can get. And especially the stugs being so many points. So um, I, excuse me. I might have fired my pack 40s there. Uh, technically, I don't think they had line of sight. 
so maybe I didn't. Uh, but I go ahead and move the Stugs up, and I take a couple of pot shots there at the guys in the buildings. And uh, I go ahead and move my pack 40s up so that they can get within shooting distance. Kind of just looking at the table, uh, we go ahead and roll for the Blitzkrieg move. Oh, or yeah, okay. Uh, had a little mini earthquake there for a minute. So actually I'm rolling to hit uh, with my studs. I think I decided to use the cannon because I was trying to shoot at the houses, uh, which didn't really do anything. And just, those are my dead units there uh, to the left. And measuring out my pack 40s, and I don't think those did anything. Uh, and I decide on the right flank to go ahead and move my guys back because I figured that Bailey was going to assault sooner or later. And I really just wanted to try to uh, make a retreat because obviously moving forward just wasn't helping any. So Bailey's doing really well on the right flank and I'm doing, uh, I have the advantage on the left flank. So another miniature earthquake here. Uh, I believe this is when I found out that my computer was dying and I would have to end up charging it. So I was trying to adjust everything. <laughs> Don't get motion sick. Uh, so pretty much right now uh, we're getting ready to head into turn six. Uh, I believe it was either on turn six or around this time that we decided we'd play for one or two more turns. So we're trying to keep that in mind as we play the game. And of course I roll for a Blitzkrieg move while we're still having the Earthquake going on here. And pretty much just trying to get every Blitzkrieg I can. I realize the Platoon can't move because it's pinned down and uh, Pack 40s don't make it. And I believe my Platoon on the right does not make it either. So I go ahead. And uh, I'll move my Stugs up another couple of inches. So now we are going to be heading into turn 6. So kind of an interesting battle because we're both winning uh, on our relative sides of the board. So you know at this point it can still definitely go either way. So with that, uh, and with my platoon almost needing to get the morale check, uh, which again, I'll note, since I combined the HQ with the platoon, we went ahead and counted that towards the number of units that you would count towards the morale check. So if that's wrong or um, something like that, feel free to leave comments at the bottom of the video. So Bailey decides to move forward. Uh, pretty much, you know, with that many units and with the limited amount that I had, he obviously decided, you know, it's time to go ahead and move up and cover some ground. So he does that. I believe he might leave his mortar behind. Move some of his bazookas up. Or no, he, he goes ahead and he uh, moves the man-packed mortar team there. So he makes a general advance on that right flank. Uh, not a whole lot to do on the left here. So I think he just kind of tries to keep shooting a little bit. Um, obviously, since he cannot pin me down with the number of guys that he has, he's just kind of trying to uh, get some pot shots off there and do what he can on that side. And uh, once again, you know, that's something very important uh, and that I had to keep in mind as well. You cannot go into assault without pinning them down. Uh, it's pretty much suicide. So we make some rolls there, some saves, and uh, look in the rule book a little bit. Try to make sure we uh, are doing all the rules right. So he decides to go ahead and measure out to see who can hit and who can shoot. Um, make some rolls there. And let's see, he makes at least one hit. I think, he, I think he makes like three hits, maybe, uh, and I fell the save for that, so I lose a unit. So pretty much that whole platoon is just about gone. I think I had actually um, one guy left from it. So now it's turn six, 
And uh, once again, the focus for me is just on this left flank. So I'm trying to move my stugs up towards the objective from here. Uh, I'm really hoping that I can just get on it by the end of the game uh, and be able to win. So I'm kind of taking a look at things here, deciding what to do. Uh, and I rolled to see if I could unpin, and I roll a six, so my guys are free to move in that platoon. And I decide to go ahead and move my stugs up, and of course I make it clear that I'm not taking a straight path uh, into the field. So like I said, I cannot afford those to be bogged down and unable to shoot. So I go ahead and roll my machine guns, shoot what I can there. And uh, here is where I think we made a mistake. I said it didn't matter because it was platoon allocation, and he took one out of the building. So anyway, turn seven, uh, Americans, the last turn of the game for Bailey. So we end up figuring out that if he's within, I believe it was four inches of the objective, that um, he could pretty much win the game. So he decides to go ahead and move his guys out of there trying to keep them alive and in the meantime on the right flank he decides to go ahead uh, move up and he's measuring to see if he can end up assaulting so he does that moves them up into the field so we can see here and uh yeah at this point i mean if, from the point that he started moving up like that i guess you could say uh, the heat was definitely on because my objective on the right side was pretty much unguarded now, and the pack 40s being on my right um, obviously are not going to endure any kind of assault. So he just does a massive move here and uh, ends up shooting here in a couple moments, counting out which guys can shoot, uh, measuring out the spacing, of course, and I end up losing, I think I end up losing a guy there, and he, yeah, as you can see, um, I lost a couple guys in that, and he's trying to measure for assault to uh, see if he can assault up, because of course that's going to be his best chance at trying to uh, win here, is try to go from assault to assault and such. So he moves those guys up, uh, there is one guy that I had moved in the building, so that's who he's trying to assault. Uh, the other guy by the side of the building was just outside of range. So I think he was kind of hoping here that, um, you know, at least gain a little bit of ground. So he goes ahead and rolls uh, an important roll to see if he can make it, and he just gets it. So um, I believe I tried to take a cover save or something here, and it didn't end up working out to... Uh, not to my pill, obviously. Or I got to fire back at them, and it didn't do anything. So he rolls to see if he can kill some guys. I started to take that one off, and then I realized I had to just take the one out of the building. And uh, the assault ends up... Or, yeah, like the assault ends up ending or whatever, and I believe I consolidated, so I just tried to get him out of there. Because uh, obviously... If I lose too many platoons, even though it's the last thing of the game, then that could affect me uh, when tallying up things like points. So he goes ahead, uh, and he moves his guys up a little. And this will pretty much be his last action on this side for the game. So as you can see, uh, Bailey has a very strong grip on that right side. Very strong grip. So... Absolute last turn of the game, uh, and this is pretty much where I saw that we would make it or break it. So I go ahead, I move 12 inches, and I try to get on that objective. Uh, and my goal here was to take out that one single platoon that would, or sorry, the one squad uh, that would be closest to them, so that uh, if something was not within four inches, it would not be contested, and I could win the game. So it was definitely heated. Um, as you can see here, I actually let it record showing us talking about it a little bit. Um, we were talking about um, 
line of fire and things like that. I went ahead and I shot the pack 40s just trying to get some pot shots off uh, once again for the issue of points. So I take some shots there uh, and it ends up not really doing anything, which was to be expected, I guess. After all, they uh, are anti-tank guns. So with that done, I go ahead and I move my focus back to the important side of the table. So this is it. Uh, this is where the game was either going to go awesome or end in a stalemate. So we're talking about line of sight a little bit. We're trying to figure out who can shoot at who, um, whether I can shoot at the guy behind him and such. So what we did, I used machine guns on my two stokes on the left, uh, and I shot at the guy I was pointing at right there. Uh, and then I used the cannon to shoot at the guy in the building. And I was like, oh man, six shots. Uh, if I can get him to fell, just one cover save. Or, you know, one normal save. That's all I would need. So I roll, uh, and I think I get four hits, and he rolls to cover save, and he makes it. What would you say you think went well, and then what didn't go well? Alright, well, I didn't know the rule that if you march to the double, then it's... Shot. If I had known that, I would have spent the first turn running instead of digging it. Right. Because I had the first turn. Um, that, I feel, would have changed the game. Because, because you would have been closer to I would have been a lot closer. I wouldn't have had all those free shots on me. Right. Because uh, the only thing I was, uh, uh, I didn't, I was upset about is that I never got to do the... Uh, Gavin bombs, because I have so this on airborne, I have special grenades right. um, that are more powerful, they're almost as powerful as the they, That would have been the same I wanted to see how that works, because something tanks is really different, because you have to roll, because troops are intimidated, and then they have their own defensive fire, so there's actually rules for, like, if yeah, tanks move within 400 units, no rising fire or anything. So why do you think went well on your side? Uh, it kind of helped to make it more uh, so. Um, I had big squads. The big squads. Yeah. I had big squads of guys compared to you. Like how big? How many teams were in one of your units? Um, one of mine was a seven man with a command squad, and the other was like ten because I had my head. Yeah. My base squad I had nine fire teams, not adding in. The Your command, command squad fire. and the support more support uh, bazooka, and then I had an extra command unit or so in each pretty cool because I had my second command in my command. I think if we definitely would have just kept going to an objective, you would have won because you could have just ran to the objective. You. I mean, this one, even though I had the path 40, you could have either assaulted. I don't know. That's a good game. Yeah.